Did you know that the thrill in almost every circus act comes from defying the force of gravity for a few split seconds? Gravity pulled you up or sideways instead of down. You can't escape gravity, not even when you go out of this world. is really laying it on us today. And it's gonna get worse before it gets better. Thanks a lot, Force. <laughs> Just remember, behind every cloud, there's a silver lining. Shut it <laughs> off. Today, we're talking about gravity. And have I got news for you. Gravity does not discriminate against anybody or anything. We all fall together. Ever dream of joining the circus? For kids in Peru, Indiana, that dream comes true every summer. Hey, do you want to meet somebody that's really great on the trampoline? Uh-huh. Right there. His name's Craig. That little, how old is he? Six. Hold it, Craig. Can you? Thank you. Now, how do I do this? Yeah. Wait, can you slow down and show me what you're doing? Um, your feet on the mat, spread apart on the mat. Like next, that? Next, just go up and L and Bring put them. your feet together. Let's do it all at the same time. At the same time. So first, feet apart. Mm -hmm. And when I'm up in the air, feet together. Mm -hmm. I see. What are you doing with your arms? You should have to your arms and feet together. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Like that? Yeah, like this. Is that good? Ah! Ah! Ouch! Thanks a lot, Craig. I always wondered why you bounce so easily on the trampoline. I learned your body causes a downward force that stretches out the trampoline spring. The spring sends all that energy back to the spot where you jump. The harder you jump, the higher you bounce. Gravity is part of almost every circus act. Up here, the real trick is not to let it get you down too soon. It's a long way up, but you come down fast. What trick is Linda going to do? She's going to do a flange. What's flange that? right! She's going to arch over the bar upside down what? on her back swing. Why did she call out what she was going to do like that? Because so that the catcher will know what's coming. Oh. How does she know when to fly out? When he calls her up, she goes. On the trapeze, your body's like a pendulum in a clock. At the bottom of your swing, you're going the fastest and feeling the greatest pull on your arm. Oh, she missed it. Oh. The trapeze net's a shock absorber, exactly the opposite of the trampoline. Instead of bouncing you back up, it spreads out your energy and slows you down. Oh, 
Have you ever gotten hurt on this trekking? Uh, not serious. I had scrapes and bumps and stuff, but no broken bones or stuff. How long have you been flying? Four years. Land right! Oh, that was beautiful. Fingertips. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a teeter board. It's a lever, and it's kind of like a seesaw. Oh. And the person jumps from pedestal, and the person over here goes up when they can stand. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't have to do that, no. do I? <laughs> you can just go straight off. Well, you can do it. Go ahead and try it. Okay. You will? All right. Okay, Brian's going to jump. And just stand, I'll have to just stand on him? Yeah, just stand. Feet together. Uh-huh. Keep your legs straight. And I'll land on that? Yeah. Now, how is he going to know when to jump? When you slap. Oh, I have to slap. Don't don't jump yet. <laughs> I have to slap like this and All he'll... Right. When you're ready, you slap and he'll go. You just stay Are you sure I'll be okay? Yeah, I'll slap down here. Okay. No. What do you carry it for? See, it helps you keep your balance, and and it make it's like when you bend down and you're free walking, it makes your weight closer to the wire. Is that why you're holding it lower? Mm-hmm. Low like that. So it's kind of like almost as if you're bringing your weight closer to the wire. Yeah. Okay. Now tell me, what happens if you don't have the pole down that low? Okay. See, if you put the pole up here, it makes your yeah, it, it, it's harder to balance. The pole yeah. goes all over the place. But when you have it lower, it makes your body weight closer to the wire. That's really good. It's not heavy for you? How much does it weigh? About 15, 30. 15 pounds. How much do you weigh? 75. And you can lift that easily? Well, you did. Well, you get used to it. Can you do any tricks with the pole? Mm -hmm. Can you do some now? Yeah. <laughs> How long did it take you to try it? Did they have to talk you into it? Yeah. <laughs> they did. When you first get up here, and being down low, it's really, <laughs> it's really. Gary. Not all these kids will go on to the big top, but for a few, this may be the stepping off point to the greatest show on earth. <laughs> No kidding. I think gravity's a little bit too much for him. <laughs> but no wonder. You guys forgot the poles. I didn't forget. What are they for? For balancing. I'm supposed to put them in his arms. And then he'll just stay up? Yep. Got yours? Yep. Okay, there check you go. it out. Okay. Ta-da! <laughs> oh, now I know what this wheel is for. Oh, take that string. Okay. Can you take that side? Ready? Now hold it real tight, okay? Alright. For his next trick. Here okay. we go. go. 
And the moral of that story is never go riding on a rope without your balancing pole. <laughs> right. <laughs> Whoa. We may need some balancing poles if we go out in this wind. Hey, nobody's going out in this wind with or without poles. This is Force Field. Can you hear me? I'm standing, I'm trying to stand just outside the Weather Bureau. I don't dare let go of the doorknob. I can tell you the force of gravity combined with the force of Rufus's wind can really topple you over! The World Domino Spectacular. 100,000 dominoes falling in precise formation. that earned its arranger, Bob Specker Jr., a place in the Guinness Book of Records. Gravity has the ability to make you seem strong Ooh. or weak. <clears throat> if you were on the moon, the barbell would weigh only one-sixth as much as on Earth. You could lift things easier and throw things much further. However, if we lived on Jupiter, things would weigh three times as much as on Earth. Barbells would be harder to lift, and we couldn't throw things very far. However, once back on Earth, things would return to normal. What if gravity pulled you up or sideways instead of down? the moon's gravity does pull things up on the earth. It's too far away to pull anything off, but it makes the water bulge. That's what we call the tides. The Bay of Fundy in Canada has some of the highest tides in the world. Some places along this inlet, the water rises more than 50 feet from low tide to high tide. low tide. Fortunately for me, otherwise I would probably be drowning. Or swimming. See this pier here? During high tide, the whole pier is covered with water. And at low tide, you can walk right underneath it. Through speeded up photography, we can see how the tides rise every 12 hours. Dr. David Scarrett, a marine biologist, yeah. why the Bay of Fundy is so turbulent. The sloppy bit. Through all of these passages here, you've got something like a cubic mile of water. If you could imagine a hundred baseball fields and flood them all to half a mile depth, you've got that much water coming through this area, and it's all driven by the tide. As the tide rises in the Bay of Fundy, then this water has to go somewhere, and it goes down these passages and into the bay. Well, to get there, it has to come through these li little narrow gaps all of these little narrow gaps on the chart, which you yeah. can see here, um, through all of these islands. And right now where we're standing, there, there is a, a ridge, a sill, and there's about 100 feet of water behind us. And right where we are now, there's about 300 feet. And this water is just coming and falling over here. And it's just like water going down the bath, you know, with that little, look at it, look at it right down here now. How come the water rises and falls like that? How come sometimes we have high tides and sometimes we have low tides? Well, it's caused by the gravity of the sun and the moon, and they pull on the earth. 
they pull on the holder at the same time, but it's the water that moves the most. How often does the tide get high and, and then get low? Well, you have high tide twice a day and low tide twice a day, so the tide comes in and goes out every 12 hours. This is poor Spiel, your weatherman. Hello to all you lucky people who are warm and dry. There's a lot of splashing out here. Tides are running 10 to 20 feet higher than normal. I thought you said it was the moon's gravity that made high tides. It does. But he just said it was the hurricane that was making the high tides. Well, maybe there's something about the hurricane on TV. Hurricanes don't cause tides, but the wind pushes water onto land. A lot of water. This makes the tides higher than they would be normally. Seen from a satellite, a hurricane covers hundreds of square miles and releases many times more energy in one second than an atomic bomb. Which really gets around, doesn't he? Are hurricanes the same as typhoons? Yeah, they call them typhoons in the Pacific. Hurricanes are nature's best heat transporters, and they're one of the most powerful forces in nature. In 1900, a hurricane that hit Galveston, Texas, had enough energy to drive all the world's power plants for two years. Man, if we could harness all that force, we might not have an energy crisis. As a hurricane passes over land, it loses force. Yeah, it's losing it on us. We can expect Rufus's force to weaken. Over the next 12 hours, mine is weakening already. <coughs> hey, what about something like gravity? Does that ever weaken? Nope. In fact, it's gravity that keeps a spacecraft and even the moon in orbit. Well, what would happen if there were no gravity at all? Are you kidding? Things would just go sailing off into space forever. Oh, wow. <laughs> like like a slingshot flinging a spacecraft high above the earth then the rocket engine shuts off and the spacecraft begins falling around the earth this path is the orbit well if they're falling why don't they crash on earth they keep missing it because well they're also moving sideways around the earth you mean orbiting is really falling you got it How'd you like a quiet dinner for two aboard Skylab? Now that's what I call fast food. <laughs> <laughs> How can there be any gravity here? Everything's floating. They're not floating. Gravity's pulling on Skylab and everything in it. They're all falling together. That can of tuna isn't falling. Well, the astronaut must have given it a little push when he let go of it. Ever tried to get a drink of water without a glass? That's impossible. Not when you're weightless. If you put a scale under one of the astronauts, it wouldn't register any weight. Far out. You can say that again. Far out. <laughs> you mean when you're weightless, the slightest push can send you off in any direction? Right. Then you can't ever get away from gravity. Right. It's the force that's always with you. Well, looks like Rufus will be long gone by tomorrow. This is for Spiel. Rufus is on his way out, and so am I. Friday will be clear and cooler with winds from the west sweeping out all the pollution and smog. You can say this for hurricanes. They give the atmosphere a good cleaning. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Have a good weekend. Forcefield signing off. So long, Force.
Carter was performing a trick, making an egg float in water, when the phone rang. An insurance company hired the Bloodhound Gang to investigate the theft of a very valuable clock from the collection of Mr. Keith. Mr. Keith claimed that he was in the shower when the phone rang. It was then he saw the thief in the bathroom mirror. According to Mr. Keith, the theft occurred during a sudden rainstorm, but the Bloodhound Gang couldn't find footprints in the mud. Mr. Keith had ordered 100 pounds of salt for the following week, but it was delivered early. Ricardo followed footprints to an old and deep wishing well. Maybe the burglar was just steamed at Mr. Keith. That was the clue Vicky needed. She rushed home to take a shower. Now for the conclusion of The Case of the Flying Clock. What's the meaning of all this? Let's step over to the window. You said the burglar came in through this window, right? Exactly. Impossible. We can't find any footprints. You said the burglar entered during the sudden rainstorm last night. His shoes would have been muddy from the garden. Uh, my housekeeper would have uh, vacuumed up any footprints. But you told us you fired your housekeeper days ago. Uh, now, see here. Uh, your duty is to recover the flying pendulum clock. Uh, not to persecute me with these insulting questions. Uh, I've been burglarized. Uh, the scapegrace is on the loose. Catch him! What? The miscreant. Oh, the burglar! Red hair, sunglasses, chipped front tooth. Are you certain of that description? Quite certain. You said you started a hot shower in the phone rang. After answering the phone, you then returned to the bathroom. You said that's when you saw the burglar reflected in the mirror? Uh, precisely. I tried out the shower and mirror at home. How enterprising. You didn't see the burglar. I've had quite enough of this, miss. Look at the mirror. Fogged up. When the steam from the hot shower hits the cold mirror, you can see what happens. Water drops fog up the mirror. Mr. Keith, you, you couldn't have seen anyone's reflection and certainly not detailed like a chip too. The burglar is a figment of your imagination. You made him up. You weren't in the shower last night. You were out in the rain. Uh, what on earth for? To hide the flying pendulum clock. You hid it yourself and said it was stolen in order for the insurance company to pay you for the loss. What? Arrogant nonsense. Carry a superb clock like that out into the rain. It would be ruined. I'm sure you waterproofed it somehow. And just where am I supposed to have hidden it? Perhaps we better have a look around. Out back, Officer Dobbs. He looked at those sacks of salt. He almost turned white. Zach, I've got it. Notice these footprints. I told you there was an intruder. They lead from the house to the well, kerplunk, and then back to the house. Dropped in the well? Unthinkable, even for a sneak thief. Certainly the last place one would consider hiding a clock. Or to look for one. Mr. Keith, do you know how to make an egg float in water? Uh, uh, yes, yes. Uh, that old parlor trick. Oh, uh, so we have definitely established there was an intruder, have we not? Not if the footprints are yours. And not if we can fish the clock out of the well. We can't risk poking around with a hook. The clock is too valuable. We'll damage it. Uh, quite naturally, I forbid it. Uh, not that I believe the clock is down there. Officer Dobbs, we think Mr. Keith plans to recover the clock with salt. Only after the coast was clear. Salt? Salt is the secret. If you put an egg in fresh water, it sinks. But if you add a lot of salt, it makes the water denser and the egg floats, rises to the top. But I don't think you ordered 100 pounds of salt to float eggs. OK, if we try something? Yes, if it'll save the police time and expense. <laughs> That's it. Is this 
there's anything down there, it ought to float up like an egg. Unless the clock is too dense. What do you know? <gasps> King Louis flying pendulum clock. Sealed in a waterproof bag with enough air in it to make it sink in fresh water but float in salt water. Brilliant. Thank you. Not you, them. <laughs> The Bloodhound Gang. <laughs> hey, it's not so bad out there. A few broken branches to clean up, but that's it. We're really lucky that tree didn't blow over. Yeah, hurricanes pack some powerful forces. I'll bet you two will take them a lot more seriously from now on. <laughs> well, is there any force you can't take seriously? Well, without gravity, you sure wouldn't have a leg to stand on. Oh, you'd have a leg, but you wouldn't be able to stand. <laughs> right? One Contact is a production of the Children's Television Workshop.